Bless the Lord who forgives all of our sins. His mercy is forever. We're on page 264 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of our lessons. Our first reading this morning is from the second chapter of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? The Word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 103. Let's read the bracketed portion, verses 8 through 14, alternately by whole verse. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He has not dealt with us according to our sins nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. For he himself knows whereof we are made, he remembers that we are but dust. Our, days are Our second reading this morning is from the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. 
we are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head, and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father, who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, 
and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord, bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good to see you today. Remember that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Today we, we remember that we are finite creatures, that we are finite creatures beings. We, we live, we die. We're born and we go through this life and we do the best we can and we die in the end. When we look at the age of the earth and just the span of humanity, we are just a blip, a very small part of that. We keep that in mind. We take a special day. Now you wouldn't want to stay there all the time. That would not be healthy. But to take a day and to remember, to set aside that we are finite, that we have a beginning and an end. Our time here on earth is just that, a time. I remember some years ago when I first went to Pittsburgh and I worked in some steel mills fixing equipment and they had various safety records. Some were very safe. And they wouldn't let you, me as a contractor, just go anywhere. It always guided me so I wouldn't. But others were not quite so safe. And it was like, hey, where do I get to the main office? And they're like, it's over that way. So I'm like, okay. And if you don't know me well enough yet, I have absolutely no sense of direction. So over that way, and I just started heading that way. Well, of course, I, I'm lost. And I came around a couple of turns, and there was this gigantic that of molten steel like just there and I'm like no no guardrails no warning I'm thinking you could walk it you could die in this place this is I, I backed up and went the other way when we have those moments where um, we're scared to that point where our heart sort of stops and skips a beat and we feel that we're reminded personally of our finitude that our lives are limited and that they're fragile. So now that we have that perspective, what do we do with that perspective? What do we do with the perspective of our finite too? What, what values and lessons do we take from that and incorporate into our daily lives? Especially as we begin our Lenten journey, this 40 days of, of fasting, penitence, almsgiving, as we begin this time of reflection, what, what values might be helpful when we have this perspective in hand? So the first one I thought of was humility. We can at all from time to time think more highly of ourselves than we are. In fact, sometimes we might think of ourselves, well, no, I'm, I'm hu humble, I don't overdo it, but an examination of our actions show otherwise, that we can be defensive, self-protective, we can think of ourselves as more important as, as we ought. When we go to the Grand Canyon, or if we were to see Mount Everest, or if we see any of the amazing things that are in God's universe, and we look and we see ourselves, we see, like, wow, I'm just a speck compared to this. When we look at some of the great accomplishments that's been done in the world, and we look at ours, and we fall into that trap of comparing, we can feel 
that sense of like, how do I fit into this? We can feel that sense of that, who am I? How do I fit in here? But proper humility is both knowing who you are, what you can do, and who you are not, what you cannot do. And this is a healthy humility. As we remind ourselves that we're dust, that we began out of dust, we remember that that dust is God's dust. That God doesn't make junk. That it was out of the stuff of the universe that God shaped and formed us. And though our time is limited, we can humbly walk knowing that we are loved, we are forgiven, and that we are created in God's image. The next thing we can take with us is, is awe and wonder. Now that we've picked up a little sense of, of humility, who we really are and who we really are not, we can look at God's creation and look with awe and wonder and just appreciate all the good that God has done. In a sense, we can realize that it's not all about us. It's not what I can do, but it's I can receive. And we can look at one another and that we can appreciate the gifts that each person, each unique perspective that they bring. And we can enjoy that and allow that to be a gift from God, an offer. And so we can live our days in awe and wonder. And the last one that came to my mind was hope. That we can dare to have hope. We remember the words of St. Paul that nothing can separate us from the love of God. That God's love and God's grace abound in and around us and that our, our finitude, our limitness, limitedness, those things cannot keep us from the love of God. Our failures cannot keep us from the love of God. Those times when we feel like a pile of ashes, that cannot keep us from the love of God. We can have hope because the one who laid down his life for us walks with us, remains with us. And while the great creator of all the universe became one of us, we can recognize and have hope in that, that God thinks of us Highly, that we are, while tiny specks of dust on one hand, we are mighty not because of what we can do, but because of God's goodness and love and grace towards us. And though these perspectives of humility and awe and wonder and hope can help us see God's goodness and graciousness in those around us, and we can enter a little bit more fully into the love that Christ has for each of us. Remember that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. We can take joy in our limitness, our limitedness, in our finiteness, because God loves to use the small and the weak of this world. God loves to use the dust and the ashes of this world that his glory may shine more fully. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Join me on page 264 in the Book of Common Prayer. Dear people of God, 
The first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. You may kneel or sit. Glenda. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penance, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. To Mike. To Mike. Oh, to me. I invite you to come forward and receive the imposition of ashes on your forehead.
please join us in singing the hymn in the in the bulletin. I invite you at this time to kneel if you can, or you may sit. Please join me in the middle of page 267. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another, and to the whole communion of saints, in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned by our own fault, in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord for all faults, judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward one, our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. 
that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring, bring us, us with all your saints, saints to the, the joy, joy of, of his, his resurrection. resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commanded meant to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things we that may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. All this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share with one another a sign of God's love and peace. Please be seated. Um, I, I, I pray that we all have a, a holy Lent, and I thank you for coming today. Um, there are uh, some booklets in the back. They are uh, uh, free. You can take them. They're reflections for the 40 days of Lent. Uh, feel free to take one of those. And I have purchased some books for our Lenten book study. Um, we're going to begin tomorrow at the 10 o'clock. Uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, we have a book study time. So if you'd like to come to that, just show up and I'll have the books there. You can purchase them. We're also going to do it between services on, on Sunday. Between services on Sunday. And it's a, it's a really powerful book study on racial healing. So I invite everybody that is interested. Let me know. And I'll, I have some books and I can order some more. So I look forward to that. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice for the whole world.
Eucharistic prayer begins on page A, begins on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, to Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. At this time, you may stand or kneel as you are able. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen christ our passover is sacrificed for us Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Our post-communion prayer is found on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the blessing of God send you out into the world in the peace that you need, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 